What's up, bro? How you Good in yourself. Doing well. Yeah. Oh. That's a real key sign about what we shouldn't be doing when we play no gi guard. The further our limbs get away from our body, the weaker they are. And I've got my legs all the way out here. My core's really taxed, okay? And it takes very little from that to like throw my legs past. And it's very hard for me to recover. If I play my guard with my knees closer to my chest, I can actually start to control a lot better. And I've got that mobility, okay? So guys, we're gonna be working on a bit of an open guard and retention module. You're gonna get your training partner, right? They're gonna stand in front of you. You're gonna go to your supine guard. Now remember team, being flat on our hips and flat on our shoulders is less than ideal. So, I wanna be playing one side or the other of my hip and one or the other of my shoulder. What Nat is gonna do is she's gonna move from 180 to 180 and I'm gonna follow. But I'm not following with my upper body. This is not what I'm doing. I'm not doing the clock face, okay? What I'm gonna do is my shoulders are gonna stay pinned to the mat and I'm gonna follow with my knees and hips, okay? So Nat's gonna move and I'm gonna go to where I can make connection with my hand, okay? Notice how I'm turning on my hips. One leg is going low and one leg is going high, okay? We're just gonna start with this drill so that you get this, like, you get the sensation of following and keeping them in front of your guard, okay? Keeping your legs engaged. For you guys who are a little bit more advanced and once you've got that down, you can start to do 360, okay? This week, I'm trying to work on the team with their open guard retention, right? This is a pretty um, challenging thing for a lot of beginner pr practitioners, but it's also something I'm working on myself. There's a lot of different angles um, that we have to look at and consider. We have to look at using top and bottom limbs to find new angles and create connection at the same time to stop them from passing. Unlike the gi where we can anchor to grips, we don't have any static grip anchors in no gi. We have to be pretty dynamic and responsive to whatever our training partner is showing us. So it's a project. Um, I'm not going to claim it's my biggest strength and that's one of the reasons I'm forcing the team to work on it. Um, our big inspiration and the people that we're looking at for this are people like Lucas Kennard, um, Lachlan Giles, Levi Jones Leary, um, to name a few. Um, they've arguably got will the best guard retention in the world when it comes to open guard retention. So that's the main thing I'm trying to get the team to work on. It's a fairly advanced technique um, and it might take us all week to get this down. It's pretty early on in the week and the way that I structure the week is um, that we're usually drilling at the start of the week um, and by the end of the week we're starting to look at entries and we're starting to figure out where these positions can take us. So this seems like a pretty rudimentary drill for right now, but we'll develop it and we'll just keep working on it until the team get it down and they're comfortable using it in rolls. So yeah, that's where we're at. You want me to go 360? Uh, yeah, right Your training partner is now, oh, are you feeling in the core of it? Yeah. <laughs> what we're doing guys is like, yeah, it's a basic drill, but we're also conditioning our hips, we're conditioning our core so that you can follow them. There shouldn't be this big rocking motion when you follow the person. This kind of happens when we first start. She goes 360 and I have to go to like throw my legs by, okay? I don't wanna to have to do that. I wanna be able to keep my core engaged here so that I can just follow, okay? Now, we're gonna add a little bit more realism from our training partner. They're gonna put their hands in that passing position, okay? Now, from here, they're gonna start doing the 180, okay? So going through the 180 here. To block that 180, watch what we're gonna do, okay? Firstly, I can't really connect to the hands here because then I'm not gonna be able to stop the feet. 
So as she goes, I'm gonna turn, make contact, and then I'm gonna do a pummel with my foot over the elbow and down onto the hand. My top foot goes high, and if she pressures in, I've got my hand here, okay? One. Two, okay? Ideally, I want this elbow inside. I don't wanna be outside like this, it's weaker. I wanna go inside, and then this one is gonna come under my knee and connect to that foot. They're gonna choose their side. I'm gonna go in. And look, in this case, I didn't even make the connection on the far leg. Big danger for me. Get to the near one. We do wanna make a connection with our hand, okay? The benefit to this connection as well is it helps me to self-frame. What I mean by that is my knee doesn't go straight to the floor and I can start like absorbing some of that pressure with my chest and shoulder so that this leg doesn't get flattened out. From here, I can start to push away. And now once I've got that space, I can start to go outside to that position, okay? Yep, good. Now bring this left foot across, yes, yeah. Cool, that's the one bro, nice. Okay, I'm like, oh shit, I'm in, I'm in trouble here, so I'm gonna push away. In that push, now I'm gonna extend my arm and leg and start turning to my other hip and throwing my head around the outside, okay? Now that foot can start to go to his far thigh and then I can start to connect, build up, okay? But just, yeah, like, you'll start to find it. There's a bit of a pivot that you gotta make on your, he your hip, but also think about swinging your head around the outside, okay? Cool. Push away, swing outside, and when we get to here, team, it's really important that I don't just go oh, and like grab for the hips, okay? She'll just walk off of everything. So, <laughs> I wanna keep this hook active, so my, hoots, ho my hook is flexed, and now we can make a grip here on the front of the knee if we need to. You may not need to. You can start to go to that one. But make sure that you use your hands. I like to think about like uh, the rule in health and safety. If you're climbing a ladder, three points of contact, okay? Anyone work in construction here? Joseph's not here, so he can't correct me, okay? But something like that, right? So here. Once I get to this position, I'm gonna throw this hook in behind their knee. Shift so I'm square behind. Now I can start to sit up and grab the front of the hip on both sides, push their knees forward and start to take them into that like um, baby bolo, or like the, uh, sorry, not baby bolo, like crab ride. From here we take that seat belt and our one hook's gonna come in and that's the side we're gonna to fall to. Then we can start to put our top hook in, okay? Make sure you put your hooks and your seatbelt in so that we've secured the position, all right? So once I get here, one, two, three, look, my back's off the ground and I start to sit up into them. Push the legs out and pull in with the hands. Then we can start to go. Hook, turn, top hook goes in and then you can do whatever, okay? Cool? Health and safety, three points of contact. Climb, climb, pull and push. Try to put them down nicely so they don't bruise their ass. Okay, cool, let's do it. Yes, I need this grip if I'm gonna go to your far ankle, okay? okay. Shift your hips, shift your hips. Drop your knee back inside. You need a frame. That was a cool get up, nice. All right, sweet guys. So um, that concludes um, a Tuesday night down here at uh, Future. Um, what I've got the team working on this week is a bit of open guard retention, as you've probably seen. Um, 
This is a relatively um, new thing for the team to be working on, and probably even myself, in all honesty. Um, you know, after we watched things like CJI um, and the most recent ADCC trials from Oceania, we see guys like Lucas Kennard and um, Levi Jones Leary really putting on some open guard and guard retention clinics. So I'm really trying to get the team to upgrade that so that they feel comfortable on both on top and on bottom and um, essentially just creating more nuance in their game. Uh, I want to start them with that early because um, learning it late kind of sucks and it's very hard to do. So the earlier we can get onto these kind of concepts and get people comfortable with the idea, the, the earlier they can start to innovate with them. Um, I'm certainly no innovator. Um, but I mean, innovation in jiu-jitsu is just a byword for stealing from other people anyway. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you next time. Us. Don't forget to like, uh, comment and subscribe and all of that stuff. Catch you next time. Why'd you stop?